This video is about the Adobe Lightroom Classic catalog file. So the way that that Lightroom works and um, quite a lot of other uh, sort of modern image editing software is that rather than loading and saving images and editing the images directly like we would do in say um, something like Adobe Photoshop, the more traditional editing, editing software, um, what we actually do is we import the raw images or, or raw photographs um, into a catalog file. And so it's basically like a, a proxy file, if you like, or um, a kind of a, a bit like a big, big thumbnail image. And this is just a reference point for the software. So once those images are imported, we can edit those images. And at the end, uh, when we want to, to save our file somewhere, we do what we call export. And it's only at that point that the edits are actually applied to the, to the um, file itself. Um, it never touches the original raw file. It just creates a new file with a combination of the information of that image and all the edits that you've done to it. And so all of this information, all of the edits and everything that we do to the file are saved in, in a catalog file. Now, so if I go over here, we've got a few uh, folders. We've got um, the, the Nikon Z62 at the top there, which is the memory card off my, my camera imported images and exported images. These are just two folders that I've created on my desktop. And then I've got Simon's Lightroom here. And in here you can see we've got the uh, LRCAT file, which is the Lightroom catalog file. And then we've got a few other files as well that are all to do with that. These ones here are temporary files that are only there when, when um, Lightroom's opening and kind of editing that, that catalog file. So this is really important. These files are, are really important. Um, this is where all the edits for, for your images are, are, are stored. And so if this gets deleted or whatever, you lose all your edits and everything as well. But the good thing about um, a catalog file like this is that you can duplicate it. You can uh, store it in multiple locations. You can put it on an external hard drive. It's kind of really practical in, in, in terms of that and moving your, moving your edits about. The other thing is, is that those edits are there regardless of what you export your your image to. So um, if you traditionally, in a traditional uh, editing software, if you exported your image as a JPEG and you deleted the original files, that, that JPEG file would have all of the edits burnt into it and you wouldn't have that um, those original edits. Um, in Lightroom, um, because your raw images are separate and you, you, you know, you can keep them, like say, on a, a, different, a separate hard drive or whatever, the actual editing information in the catalog records every single bit of detail that you've done to it, everything. So if you've added keywords, that'll be in there. If you've um, edited the color, if you've applied any presets or anything like that, that'll all be in, in that Lightroom catalog. And, and for me, that's quite a powerful thing. You can go back at any time and re-edit and it'll be back to kind of where it was. Um, the other uh, uh, good thing about using a catalog file is it's it's quite a bit smaller than um, editing in say in, in Photoshop where you've got um, PSD files that can really build up quite quite quickly. Um, because you don't use layers and things like that in, in Adobe Lightroom, um, you don't get that kind of uh, massive step up in size with every every layer that you use, and so in relative terms, it's actually it's actually quite the image size or catalog size is quite small compared to that. Um, however, um, although at the moment this is quite a small file, so it's 1.7 megabytes at the moment. It's got no images in. This will build up quite quickly. It gets quite big quite quickly. So as you add images, obviously all that information goes in there and all your edits and everything else go in there. Okay, so I've got that on my desktop there. So when you first come into, into Lightroom, um, it, your, the default location for the folder that it creates will be in, in pictures. There's not one in there because I've changed, to change it to another location. Um, and that's probably not the best idea for it. Like I say, it'd be better if it's on an external hard drive or something like that. So to do that, you just go to File and New Catalog. 
and then you tell it where you want the catalog to be so here it's it's in there and then you just name it as, as you want and then once you've done that it'll it'll default to that catalog if you have a problem um open it, it should just open the the last catalog that you opened um in lightroom when you open it again if you have a problem with that you can just go into your folder and just double click on on that icon there and that will open automatically in, into uh, lightroom okay so um so i'm just going to demonstrate to you kind of how this all all works so we've got our, our lightroom fo folder here um what i'm going to do is i've got images on my um, memory card there so i'm just going to click on import and on the left hand side left hand side here we have our source and you can see there it's already automatically selected uh, the sort of the memory card from a camera and we've got just half a dozen images that I've put on there for to demonstrate. Um, you can see they're all ticked. And on the right hand side, we have our destination. So this is where, where our images are going to go to. I'm not going to go into this in too much depth because this is really just to show you how the catalog works. There's other videos on, on my channel that, that kind of show you this in, in more depth. Um, at the top here, you can see we've got copy as DNG. Um, that reduces the size of uh, your raw images by uh, roughly half um, uh, while still keeping all of the original information. Um, copy is just to copy the original files as they are. Move is to move them to a different location and, and add is to add them. Say I've got, let's say I had images in on a, on a folder on the desktop. I could just add them directly without copying them to anywhere else. So I'm just going to carry on with copy just to go through go through uh, the simplest process. Um, it's got new photos. If you've got a card where you've used it multiple times, if you leave it on new photos, it'll only show you the photos that haven't already been imported. And then on the right, I'm just going to pick my folder, which is already there, imported images. And you'll see there there's some some dates. These have been shot on different dates. So there's three different dates there and it'll automatically create those folders for you um, and so that's what i'm gonna i'm gonna let it do so i'm just gonna import those there and what we should see is you can see that it's generated these three folders and they've got different images in there and so you can see you can actually have if you want the catalog file on a separate hard drive to your image files, then you can do that as well. Um, I don't really find a need for that. So I keep my image files and my catalog files on the same hard drive. I just back up the whole thing. Um, but there's there's lots of different ways. It's kind of very flexible. You know, you, there's lots of different ways that you, you can you can do this. OK, so we've got those images in. You can see it just popped up one-to-one uh, -one previews there. And what it's doing is just creating like when we click on the image, that just means that it'll automatically be rendered when we've done that instead of having to wait for it to, to load up. Um, it's quite a good, useful thing to have one-to-one -one previews on. Um, if you go to library and previews, you can build standard size previews, which are smaller than that. It just means when you zoom in, you'll have to wait a little bit for like a fraction of a second or something for it to build the, the bigger preview. One-to-one -one previews obviously take up more space, but um, it means that you'll be able to edit the, the images to kind of directly at full full view. But that's something to, to have a, a play about with anyway. OK, so I'm just going to quickly edit an image. So um, I'm going to go for this one here. This is just very, very quickly. Just jump into develop and I'm just going to just do a few edits. OK, so now if I go to imported edits and just find where that that is. So you can actually see it's not changed that image at all. That's still the original raw image that's in there and that's where that's come from. I've done these edits and those edits are now stored. OK, so I've, I've done my edits and I'm going to just pop back to library. And now I'm going to export the the image. So I'm just going to export. Um, I'm just going to 
choose the folder, so exported images. You see there's nothing in there at the moment. Um, I'm not going to bother renaming it. I'm change it to JPEG. Um, 90% is okay. And then I'll just change this to well, maybe 1500 as a, as a kind of a web size sort of image. Just going to sharpen that for screen. Um, again, all of these are kind of, I'm not going to go into too much detail, just the, I've done all of this in, in other videos. Um, and then I'm just going to click on export. So what you should see now is that's your original images there. And if I go into here, you can see that's um, an edited image. You can see the difference between them. So there's a, a raw image. And then there's our, our, edited, our edited image. So basically, this is a kind of the process that you've got. You've got, you import the raw images, you edit the raw images in Lightroom. Lightroom applies those in the catalog file and it only gets those um, settings and those edits only get applied to the image at the very end when you're exporting it. OK, so one of the problems with this is that if you go into into here, you've got your raw images all kind of linked up. And if I was to move this image now just on my desktop, you know, on my computer, and I'm just going to move that to there. What will happen now is you'll see that this exclamation mark appears here and basically says this photo is missing. OK, so if I go here and I try to export, unable to export because the source files are offline and missing. So what it means. So what it means by offline is so you can see here on my Macintosh hard drive, there's a little green light. And basically you can have as many hard drives attached to this as you want. And you can import images from lots of different sources and it will just it will add them as they are. So if you disconnect a hard drive, you take a hard drive out, um, those images will still be visible in here. You'll still be able to edit them, but you won't be able to export them. So you can see with this image that's offline at the moment that I can still go in and I can still edit it. It's got that one to one preview in the catalog file. Um, I can still do the edits and everything, but I won't be able to export it. So really, if you're going to move files, you need to move them within Lightroom. And yeah, although this is only showing kind of uh, one level of uh, folder depth here, you can show the parent folder as many kind of levels up as you want so that you can move them around on, on hard drives. You can move them from one hard drive to another. Um, so if I take this image here, for example, I can move that to another folder. Uh, ask me move on disk. Now we've got two images in that folder. And so um, you can move them around and it'll keep them all connected and everything else. So if I now go back to this image, click on there and go to locate and just go up to my desktop. There's the image there and select. And then you can see that that exclamation mark's gone. Um, and this is exactly the same as if you um, have a hard drive that you've removed. As soon as you put the hard drive back in, it will find the images. Now, the problem with this is, is that if this image was completely deleted, Lightroom won't then be able to apply settings to that image and, and create an exported image. So you've got to keep those raw images. Um, however, let's like say this is kind of the way that this works. You've got your original raw images and your, your kind of your final um, edited images as separate. And actually, you only really need to keep the raw images um, and export the images as you as you use them. So say you've got a, a website that you want to upload an image to, you can go into Lightroom, export the image and upload it. Um, once you've done that, you can delete that image and then say you the, the next time you use that image, you want to create a print. So you create a different sized image when you export it, um, you export that, you do your print and you can delete that, delete that image. All those edits and everything that you've done in Light will remain in Lightroom. And so there's not really any reason to be kind of having lots of duplicates of images. The other thing that um, 
that Lightroom has that um, that kind of enables you to work like this is that it has uh, create a virtual copy. So if you right click or control click on on a file, you see it's got create virtual copy, and this does an exact duplicate, and you can edit that completely separately. And you know, so if you wanted to do say a black and white or something like that um, alongside the color, and these two images are treated as separate images, but they just don't take up that. Um, double amount of space that having two separate physical images would. Okay, so I hope that's been helpful and I hope I haven't complicated things even more and, and it's kind of helped to uh, clarify how the Lightroom catalogue works. For me, this is a, a, an excellent way to work. If you're working particularly with lots of images, if you do wedding photography or portrait photography or events or something like that, being able to chuck them all into Lightroom and um, not having to do that load and save thing for batches of images, it cuts down on the amount of time that you're spending editing massively. For anybody else who's just doing um, small amounts of images, it just means that you get into the, the fun part quicker, if you like. So you get into the bit that you actually want to be doing the edit and rather than the messing around with images and all of that sort of thing. Um, I hope that's been helpful. Thank you very much.